The track record for previous YA authors isn't good. Mariko Tamaki, Gabby Rivera, Rainbow Rowell, and Beautiful Creatures co-author Margaret Stoll all failed to connect with Marvel Comics readers. Something curious happened this week. DC announced their newest black label book, Joker Harley, Criminal Sanity. One thing stood out even greater than the stupid title. Who the fuck is Cammie Garcia? Did I miss her breakout comic book? Was I sleeping when she became a comic industry heavyweight? Am I a misunderstanding what exactly DC Black Label is? Garcia must have written something groundbreaking to this point to warrant her position. She scribes the upcoming Teen Titans Raven YA novel releasing in July. She remembers how to solve math equations and make pasta is actually in the book description on Amazon. This can't be right. Surely, a YA adaptation for DC Inc. isn't all that's needed to get signed a DC Black Label, right? There's virtually no crossover between the audiences for DC Inc.'s YA books and DC Black Label. DC Comics announced its newest imprint, DC Black Label, just over one year ago. It was to feature all-star creative lineups creating new stories out of DC continuity. Many longtime readers are ecstatic for Elseworld-style stories created with mature readers in mind, similar to the original Vertigo imprint, but with the very best DC characters and creators involved. Industry icons and superstars like Frank Miller, John Romita Jr., Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, Lee Bermijo, and Greg Rucka were all included on the initial press release. Thus far, DC Black Label is an unmitigated success. Batman Dam from writer Brian Azzarello and artist Lee Bermijo is one of the most brilliantly illustrated comics ever. Issue 1 sold out at distribution despite a rather memorable controversy. Batman Last Night on Earth number 1 from superstar creative duo Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo is one of the best comic books in all of 2019. Both series released with over 50 pages of content and a premium price tag. In June, Superman Year One leaps from the pages of DC Black Label. Created by industry legends Frank Miller and John Romita Jr., two men with impeccable reputations and records in the industry. In July, writer-artist Sean Gordon Murphy launches the sequel series to his runaway hit, Batman the White Knight, on the imprint. Batman Curse of the White Knight is one of the most highly anticipated series in all of 2019. Thus far, DC Black Label appears to be living up to the hype and then some. The best writers and artists in the industry creating new self-contained stories with the very best characters. Yet Cammy Garcia is now a part of an esteemed group of creators that includes Scott Snyder, Sean Gordon Murphy, Lee Bermijo, Greg Capullo, and industry icons Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. She's also the co-author of the Castor Chronicles YA book series. The first novel, Beautiful Creatures, is a New York Times bestseller. The book centers on Bad Girl Ridley and Link, an upstart heading to New York to start a band. It was adapted into a feature film starring Alden Ehrenreich and bombed in theaters. Not exactly black label material from the sound of it. She is technically a New York Times bestselling author, but that can't be the criteria for black label. Richard C. Meyer, Chuck Dixon, and many other New York Times bestselling authors actually make comic books. Why aren't they creating DC Black Label books? At least she's going to have a fresh take on Harley Quinn and Joker, something brand new for fans of the characters. When Cammie came to us with the idea of profiling one of the most mysterious and dangerous characters in the DC Universe, it felt so new and original, said DC co-publisher Dan Didio. Joker Harley, Criminal Sanity, reframes Harley as a forensic psychiatrist and profiler working the Joker's case as a consultant for the Gotham City Police Department. Her work helps bring authorities closer and closer to catching up with the Joker. Huh. I was expecting something a bit more original than that. It's a new take on Harley Quinn, but it sounds exactly like Clarice Starling from the classic horror novel and film The Silence of the Lambs. This doesn't even sound like a derivative of the character. It's a complete ripoff. Garcia also claims Harley is the only character with the skill set and intelligence to hunt the Joker, but the investigation will force her to confront her own inner demons. 
Batman doesn't exist in Cammy's Joker and Harley Quinn universe. Eh, what does he have to do with those characters anyway? Anywho, she's going to bring something special and new to the Joker character. There is no character more terrifying than the Joker. He is one of the most complex psychopathic killers ever created, said Garcia. I wanted to approach the project as if Joker was a real person, an intelligent, insane psychopath who kills because he wants to, not because he suffers from delusions. To me, a version of the Joker who is sane like John Wayne Gacy or Ted Bundy is more frightening. If the Joker were a real person, the world would be doomed. There are no real superheroes to deal with the threat of this magnitude. Technically, she's not even writing Joker at this point. It's a brand new character based on famous serial killers, conveniently called Joker to sell books. Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs is already inspired by a real-life Mexican doctor. Norman Bates and Leatherface are both based off famous American serial killer Ed Gein. Iconic horror villain Pennywise the Clown is modeled after John Wayne Gacy himself. Not exactly the original ideas you expect to impress Dan Didio, a publisher with years of experience. The good news is the art team is plenty talented, but still not exactly what's expected from DC Black Label. Mike Mayhew has been creating beautiful comic character pinups, covers, and trading cards for years. To my knowledge, this is his first time creating sequential art, but he is very talented. Miko Suyan is a gifted illustrator in his own right, known for extremely fine line art and details. They're both credited as artists on the book, so I don't believe they're a pencil ink team. Both are likely creating their own illustrations for Joker Harley, Criminal Sanity. Despite not being the names readers expect on a Black Label series, the art should be very high quality. Black Label came under scrutiny after the release of Batman Dam No. 1. The book features the debut of Bruce Wayne's Batawang. AT&T had just acquired Warner Brothers and longtime DC Entertainment president Diane Nelson left her position. Pan Lifford was promoted to president Warner Brothers Global Brands and Experiences. DC Comics fell under her control when the controversial issue was released. She was unaware of the full frontal nudity in the comic. She was reportedly none too pleased to be blindsided by controversy. Co-publishers Dan Didio and Jim Lee acknowledged they needed to reassess Black Label moving forward. Could part of the new direction include moving away from exclusively featuring the best and brightest creative talents in the industry? Cami Garcia and the art team behind Joker Harley Criminal Sanity don't fit the original profile for Black Label. Thus far, titles under the imprint are priced at $6 and $7 each, well above the $4 industry standard. Criminal Sanity is scheduled to release nine issues. Surely, DC Comics brass don't expect readers to pay $54 or more for a series featuring a no-name writer in the industry, as well as a top-billed illustrator who, to my knowledge, has never published sequential art before. Will Cami Garcia's work successfully translate from a YA audience to DC Black Label? It's certainly possible. She soon released Teen Titans Raven for DC Inc. I imagine the crossover audience between DC Inc. and DC Black Label can be counted in the hundreds. The track record for previous YA authors isn't good. Mariko Tamaki, Gabby Rivera, Rainbow Rowell, and Beautiful Creatures co-author Margaret Stoll all failed to connect with Marvel Comics readers. The synopsis of Joker Harley, Criminal Sanity, sounds an awful lot like NBC's Hannibal series. Not the new and original story Dan DiDio claims it to be. Without a preview of the material, it's impossible to prognosticate its quality. But this is not what customers are sold when DC Black Label launched. This isn't being produced by the best and brightest creators in the industry. It's a tall ask if DC leadership think they can charge the same premium price they do for Batman Damned, Batman Last Night on Earth, or Superman Year One. One thing's for certain, I am highly skeptical a New York Times best-selling YA author holds any clout or sway with DC Black Label's audience. Will Cami Garcia break the trend and successfully translate her work into Main Street comic books? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. 
If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.